Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr Rob Setter. Thank you. Tim, that was far too um, <clears throat> professional and impactful for me to follow that, so <laughs> congratulations and thank you. <laughs> I don't think so. <clears throat> Um, it's a great privilege to be here today to talk um, at the invitation of Multicultural Affairs Queensland because it gives me an opportunity to share some of my thoughts as the Commissioner for Public Service in Queensland about the importance of inclusive and diverse workplaces and I guess to really in some ways shout out about some of the things we are doing in that particular space. I'd like to start by of course paying my respects to the Turrbal the Yagara and the Jagara people, um, who are the custodians of the land that we do come together on today. Of course, they give strength, inspiration and courage to all Queenslanders as we work, live and grow together to ensure an ever more inclusive, innovative and cohesive Queensland. I also acknowledge the Honourable Sterling Hinchcliffe, the Minister for Local Government, Minister for Racing, Minister for Cultural, Multicultural Affairs. Now, there are, of course, there are many re drivers and reasons why leaders strive for inclusive and diverse workplaces. And there's also much research available uh, on the business case for diversity and inclusion. Now, research by McKinsey in 2017 and published by Diversity Council Australia called Delivering Through Diversity reaffirms the global relevance of the link between diversity and organisational performance. And it's important to note that in the US, research is showing that there's an uplift of between 10 and 30% in terms of return of investment in the private sector where diversity has been embraced and inclusion has been practised. Now, as early as 2013, Deloitte research foreshadowed inclusion as meaning ad adaptation, not tokenism, not assimilation and simply tolerance of those who are different to the norm. But in an inclusive workplace, they said it's not just about seeing diversity in demographics across the office. Business gained value from diversity of thought, they claimed. Now, diversity and inclusion continues to be an economic, political and social imperative, certainly within the Queensland public sector and more broadly across Australia. Qu uh, the public sector is the largest employer in Queensland and we certainly are not short on strategy and targets in terms of building workforces and workplaces that better reflect the Queensland community. We also, of course, as has been pointed out already today, have legislative um, ob obligations. By virtue of the very Public Service Act that I'm responsible for implementing, public service employment is to be directed towards promoting a diverse and highly skilled workforce, drawing from government and non-government sectors. The Multicultural Recognition Act of 2016 and the Multicultural Queensland Charter provide us with an opportunity to recognise the valuable contribution of diverse groups in our community and to promote Queensland as a unified, harmonious and inclusive community. Importantly, beyond the legislation, our workplace cultures and values reflect the way that we do business and deliver services. Inclusive and diverse workplaces will better ensure our aspirations translate to outcomes and opportunities at the individual, the family, the community, regional and indeed the state levels. I'd like to share a short video we've produced about how some of our public servants view diversity and about some of their points of difference and their aspirations as a lead into the rest of the session. I wanted to be a soldier uh, and then Bohemian Rhapsody came out and for the next five years I wanted to be Freddie Mercury. <laughs> uh, I wanted to be a businessman like my uncle. I wanted to be a writer of fiction. I wanted to be a fighter pilot. Um, I wanted to uh, be a professional musician. I wanted to be a Power Ranger. Um, probably the, probably the uh, Black Ranger. I actually wanted to be like Oprah. <laughs> I thought I'd like to be a rugby league player. That's easy. Wonder Woman. <laughs> because she was fierce and fabulous. So I am the king of dad jokes at home. I'm quite ambitious. 
and independent. Well, I have two deaf parents, uh, two grandparents that are deaf, and um, two aunties and uncles that are deaf. But I'm resilient. Yeah. I'm ex-military. I'm a qualified tradesman and I'm a current CrossFit athlete. I think despite what's happened, I'm still sort of capable of achieving my goals and I, I get actually quite shy despite appearances. That I'm just like any other man, except that my kids call me mummy. I consider myself Australian, so even though I wasn't born in Australia, I I came here when I was four and I've grown up here and all of my significant milestones have happened in Australia, so I would say I'm pretty Australian. Uh, I'm not gay. Um, a few people have thought that. I don't have bother me at all, but anyway. But I can't speak English. <laughs> I'm not always the funny guy. But I'm not dumb. I'm not intimidated by any person or task in our workforce. Being bisexual not doesn't mean that you're gay, doesn't mean that you're straight actually an in-between point, um, which I think a lot of people sort of struggle with. I'm not that bad of a driver. I can drive. <laughs> For me, diversity is all about uh, seeing differences as opportunity. I think diversity is celebrating and embracing our individualities, you know, our unique strengths. We as humans are different. We come in different shapes and sizes, colours, creeds, beliefs. Richness through difference. If we're diverse, then we can all hopefully learn from, from each other. And I think that's really important. I am optimistic that the, the link between diversity and innovation is becoming more apparent to people, particularly diversity of thought. Accepting and acknowledging the differences in, in each of us. To empower people to be their whole and authentic selves. To me it's actually about um, being able to see and value the difference in perspectives and also um, being able to embrace different ways of working, leading and thinking. <laughs> Proud Queenslanders, every one of them. In 2016, the Queensland Government Chief Executive Leadership Board, that's the collective noun we have for directors general and commissioners in the Queensland Public Service, agreed to diversity targets for the Queensland public sector workforce with each department chief executive now actually accountable through their performance agreement for annual improvement. Now this became an issue, <coughs> it was brought to my attention actually, uh, when I returned to the public service after the 2012-2014 period of the, uh, the previous, gov previous to the last term government, where there was a major um, downsizing of the Queensland Public Service by about 14,000 public servants. Now that in itself as a policy objective is fine, but the way they went about it and the, the crude nature of the reduction actually severely impacted the diversity of the public service. And the data is there for all to see that the dip off in numbers where the actual impact came were in all of those who were different in the workplace, whether they were Indigenous, whether they had expressed, identified as having a disability. Now, this may have been a coincidence, but the data is so compelling, it actually sent a signal to me about the need for us to recommit to a truly inclusive and diverse workforce. So we now have um, women in lead senior leadership positions, a target of at least 50% by 2022, of having Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders represented in the public service workforce of at least 3% by then, non-English speaking backgrounds of at least 10% by then, and people with a disability at least 8%. If we were to achieve those, we would have a workforce that at least in 2017 terms was reflective of the community that Queenslanders serve. 
Now, we've made already, by simply setting targets and having a united and confirmed approach to driving greater diversity in the public service, significant achievement in uh, all the early indications are very positive. Women in senior officer roles and equivalent are actually at 55%, up some 7 or 8, 7.4% since December 2015. So our talent pipeline from a gender perspective is strong. However, women at the senior and chief executive levels um, reflect, I guess, not as badly as, the, as those figures that Tim shared, is about 35%, up marginally since December 2015. So we have some way to go to have true um, diversity of gender within our senior executive and chief executive ranks. In the Torres Strait Islander, when I was in the public service last time in the, early, in the late 2000s, the numbers were quite strong at around 6 or 7 per cent of the public sector identifying as Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. The figure um, is now, in, in December, was 2.09 per cent. So there's been a major impact in terms of in, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders uh, seeking to re be employed in the public service and indeed I get the great travesty of the incapacity of the system to retain, sustain, develop and nurture them. When it came for people with a disability, <coughs> we identified at 2017 at 2.79%. This too was down from some, I think it was six or seven from memory in that sort of in the 2000s. So again, a significant impact. Now people say to me that's because people no longer identify. And I think that's a travesty in terms of um, the culture that's been created in the service where people um, feel unsafe or unsure to actually identify that they have a disability or that they do have indeed Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders or indeed that they actually speak and think differently. So uh, while we're trending in the right way, we have a long way to go. And even when you think of the simple ageist element, 55% of employees, um, sorry, 21% of employees are actually over 55 years and yet only 5% are under 25. So in terms of the public sector workforce, not only being reflective of the diverse con uh, society we've got, we are clearly skewed to the upper end of the age profile and with that brings great challenge, I think, to system change. So how do we indeed continue to drive a more, great, more inclusive and diverse workforce in the Queensland public sector and equip all Queenslanders to access work opportunities with government? Now we've implemented an overarching inclusion and diversity strategy. These are all on the PSC website to build our workforce uh, and workplaces to better reflect that community. Um, so awareness and sharpening the focus of our managers and leaders is but one strategy. We support individual agencies, importantly, to take their own approaches to diversion and, inclu and inclusion. I am very much of a view that we need to allow individual agencies, reflective of the nature of the services they provide and the workforce they wish to, to um, grow, to optimise opportunities unique to their particular profile and their service delivery. But together overall, the board is committed to collaborate and work together to achieve, by 2022, that workforce that is reflective of our community. We're doing a number of things in partnership for the first time in, this, in the last couple of years, not the least of which with Multicultural Development Australia, about connecting government graduate mentors with MDA refugee client mentees. This develops graduates' coaching skills while demonstrating the benefits of engaging and collaborating with the community. The program encourages Queensland Government's future leaders to respect the variety of community voices and champion diversity of thought in decision making. Promoting the Work and Welcome program run by MDA in the Queensland Government places refugees um, to Australia in paid employment for 12 weeks. Now these are what some would say are baby steps and I would accept that that's true. But again, I would argue that that's steps in the right direction. We raise awareness of diversity through the Queensland Public Sector Inclusion Champions of Change, where members through our Head of Premier and Cabinet around the Queensland, Ma Queensland Male Champions of Change nationally. This is really about developing a compelling narrative to attract and retain the best talent we've got in the Queensland Public Service through our employee value proposition, Be Here for Queensland. And if you haven't checked it out on YouTube and others, please do. And of course, through White Ribbon, we're, we're creating White, White Ribbon accredited workplaces right across the Queensland Public Service, which is really for me about respectful and equitable relationships at home and in the workplace. In addition, we continue to develop our leadership capability, we, uh, including our Leader Connect initiatives and many others. But I want to close, I guess, with reference to a new initiative that 
is using the notion of using data to drive behaviour. We have um, developed an inclusion index for the Queensland Public Service and we're rolling it out by agency. Now, this is really drawing on our employee opinion surveys, which has become a key test of the culture and climate of the Queensland public sector uh, um, over the last couple of years. Now, this is really, we're trying to consolidate a view about how the diverse groups in our workforce actually feel about fairness, innovation, diversity, respect, and what to identify the barriers to them being the best they can be all with an eye to understanding and influencing leadership and management processes and practices, and above all, focusing on meaningful behavioural change. Now, the index looks to give insight to three current states or elements of diversity. One is the diversity of background, an understanding of the demographic characteristics, age, gender, disability, cultural background, sexual orientation, and whether they're real barriers to success in the workplace. I'm pleased to say that from our initial index assessment in 2017, the majority of workers don't actually feel cultural background is a greater barrier to success as some other, in, some other of these indicators. Diversity of thoughts and ideas is the second dimension that we're focusing on. The extent to which members of our public service are open to new ideas and innovative thinking, as well as how people feel free to contribute different ideas. And in this is highly patchy across the service about the extent to which individuals feel empowered and indeed have the trust and confidence to express their ideas and able to contribute to the innovation that's, that's there. So some way to go in that space. And the third dimension is really about inclusion and respect. This represents the psychosocial safety and other way relationships uh, and, other, and the way relationships support diversity and inclusion. It's about how people feel about being treated fairly and consistently in, my, in their workplace, how people treat each other with respect, how my manager treats. And I have to say, again, in this dimension, um, the notion of, of a, a workplace that is not truly valuing, that is, that is discriminating in its approach, and the feeling of a lack of fairness in the workplace remains a true challenge and barrier, I think, to the public service exercising the behaviours it needs to behave in an inclusive way where people feel safe and confident enough to come to work and be the best that they can be. I think we all have an obligation, and certainly in the Queensland Public Service, I look to the Queensland Senior Executive, Chief Executives and the Senior Officer Network to lead and work differently into the future. We must, and that's really about welcoming and embracing diversity, to be, in cruelly, to be truly diversive and adaptive of difference. Now, even though I suspect I'm preaching to the converted, I think you too, every one of you, can make that difference. And as um, you've heard today, from the public service perspective, we're not short on strategies or plans or processes uh, to improve ambitions. However, this effort's only of value if indeed each and every public servant in the service, really um, regardless of where they work, the role they're in, the classification they're in, their age or their gender, actively respects and values differences every day and in every way. The secret behind the performance of diverse teams is not necessarily um, in the inputs, that is, adding diverse team members, but in the throughput, the extent to which team members understand one another and seamlessly build upon each other's contributions. A team that is diverse on paper could still easily default to the opinions of the few aged white men in the room. We must resist that at all cost. And we, aged white men in the room, must be both conscious of that and quite deliberative about resisting that temptation. Now, assimilation has, um, has to be actively resisted. It's my final comment. A genuinely diverse culture requires intentional cultivation, and in my view, that needs to be at the heart of what organisations do to realise truly inclusive workplaces. That's certainly the ambition of the Queensland Public Service. Thanks.